Okay, I'm with Mr. Uh, Fujimoto uh, from the NTT and I'm going to be uh, talking to Mr. Fujimoto about their experiences with uh, Ethernet PON and GPON mm -hmm. and the comparison between the two and why they decided to go for the Ethernet PON. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mr. Fujimoto, in Asia in general and in Japan in particular, uh, what we have seen is that NTT has and other carriers in Japan have typically gone for Ethernet. Yeah. Uh, pawn rather than G pawn. Mm -hmm. Can you perhaps outline the reasons why that is the case? Okay. You know what? Uh, the big difference between a G pawn and E pawn is that G pawn can support the conventional TDM services. So okay. they, their service is directly mapped to a G pawn. Okay. But uh, in Japan, all conventional services like a TDM, uh, risk line circuits, for voice services mm -hmm. would be moved to uh, IP technologies. Okay. In this case, so G -POM, uh, one of the big features of a G -POM capability of a TDM support is not necessary at all. Okay. So that's the reason why uh, Japan carriers uh, prefer to use a G -POM. Okay. So it's basically um, uh, the uh the consideration of being future-proof. Right. Everything is going to be IP yeah. um, in the future, so you have to make sure that you deploy compatible technologies. Why do we find in Europe then uh, that carriers uh, prefer GPON rather than Ethernet mm -hmm. on? Is it because they might have some legacy ATM infrastructure mm -hmm. to deal with? That's why? I think uh, it's also uh, curious for me because uh, current uh, uh, Europe carrier uh, requirements for FTTH there is uh, not interested in a uh, conventional service accommodation in a uh, uh, GPON system. Okay. Their requirements are high speed internet, mm -hmm. multicasting, IP multicasting, and the both of IP. Right. There is uh, no TDM. Maybe uh, it might be uh, one of the uh, uh, reasons from a uh, uh, European system vendor sales pitch. I see. Yeah. yeah. I, and when you talk about the sales pitch, uh, I mean, obviously, we have typically the same vendors, uh, you know, selling to Asian service providers oh, yes, as well yes, as yours. Yes, they have a two why, kind of a sales pitch. Why do, why, why do they have two different sales pitch? Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Because uh, they spend a lot of uh, development resources on the GPON and they make uh, profit from the GPON system. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. <laughs> so you think, you think um, could it be because, I mean, if you look at voice or IP, for instance, as an application, I mean, you have mostly dealt on the exercise. If you look at voice or IP and other similar applications, uh, we have carriers in Europe typically, um, you know, adding interfaces to their TDM voice infrastructure mm -hmm. in form of IT, IP interfaces and not going for the wholesale replacement of those switches. Mm -hmm. um, so. It, it, can we say that they're, you know, pursuing a similar strategy when it comes to the access infrastructure as well? Mm -hmm. They want to go from their legacy TDM or ATM, whatever they have, and they want to, uh, you know, gradually progress over to the IP or Ethernet-based technologies. Mm -hmm. It's also quite an interesting question for all of carriers. For instance, uh, we cannot uh, uh, abandon the old system at once, mm -hmm. maybe uh, gradually move to uh, new technologies. But uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, FTTH, it's a completely new technology. So we don't need to, uh, it sounds strange to uh, include uh, the legacy services in the new technologies because uh, every operator wants to uh, uh, throw away uh, conventional services and conventional 5 switches and conventional TDM switches. But uh, I guess uh, all carriers, all telecom carriers, are gradually move to IP technologies. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the entity also uh, planning to do this.